Hey everyone, it is January 2023. I am Alex Roy, your trusted realtor in Eastside Portland with John L. Scott. And if you are wondering what happened in 2022 and what's gonna happen in 2023, this video is perfect for you. I'm gonna give you a summary of last year and my forecast for this coming year. So let's dig right in. And you know, before we do, I will pause and say, if any of this information is of big interest to you and you've got more questions or you have real estate goals, you can pick up the phone and give me a call anytime or send me an email, but you can also click the link in the description of this video to schedule a time that works great for you for your own free consultation, whether you like it in person or on the phone. So click that link in the description, schedule time that's great for you. All right, let's get into it. What happened in 2022? First thing, the first half of the year, we saw a pricing surge, no doubt about it. Let's take a look at this graph. Here we're seeing the average sold price for homes around the whole Portland metro area, and those are single family homes and condos. What happened? Well, every, and, and in this chart, we're going back to January of 2021. So I've, on all my charts today, I'm giving you two years of data from the start of 2021 to the end of 2022. And what we see is 2021 had a fairly, uh, you know, a historical real estate historical trend where pricing surged at mid-year and then started to drop off a little bit as we come into the fall. But look at how we made this push at the start of 2022 with pricing going straight up all the way through till May. And a big reason for that is that right at the start of 2022, we were starting to see interest rates rising. Buyers knew that the end of those super low interest rates was coming to an end. And so there was a final mad push for buyers who were ready to purchase or maybe were sitting on the fence to get out there and compete while they could still get that low interest rate. That pushed us all the way up through to May. But by that point, interest rates were starting to peak and buyers a lot of buyers got priced out of the market at that point, both with the higher uh, list prices of homes and the higher interest rates. And at that point, we started to suddenly see that the higher priced homes were not being sold in the market and it ended up being more lower price homes being sold and going under contract. And that dro drove down the average sold price prices of homes in Portland. So much so that by the end of uh, December, in end of 2022, that average sales sold price was less than what we saw at the end of the year before. But because there was such a surge through the first half of the year, we actually ended up with a higher average sales price for homes around the Portland metro area for the entire year than we did in 2021. So when you looked at the year as a whole, sellers did pretty good, especially if they were selling at that first half of that year. Second point that I wanna look at, the big increase in interest rates changed buyer demand. I've already alluded to this a little bit, but let's get into it a little bit more specifically and refresh our memory on where were interest rates. This is from Freddie Mac showing the last two years of the uh, average weekly interest rate blue being your 30 year fixed uh, residential mortgage and the green line being the 15 year mortgage, which is always a lower interest rate than the 30 year. There you can see right at the start of 2022, interest rates are starting to spike. Buyers are getting nervous. They want to get out there and purchase homes and by the midpoint in the year, uh, interest rates had already topped out high, felt like they might be hanging around there and then surged one more time in uh, September and October. And what, that, what the net result of that was, was now if we look at the total pending contracts each month, meaning that a buyer wrote an offer and it was accepted. So this is a good indication of how active buyers were out there to write offers and put offers in on home. We saw a final push for that at the start of the year and then it flattened out and dropped off severely in the last half of the year, buyer activity fell. And as we saw in the average uh, sold price of homes, a lot of those buyers were not buying very high expensive homes. It was still the ones in a more of an affordable range drawing down the average sold price. So we saw the buyer activity fall. Uh, and that really affected the entire year. Overall, the whole year, we were down on pending sales, far less homes selling than the year prior 
26,800 uh, this year as opposed to 35,400 on the previous year. And my third point, and this is as a direct result of what we just saw in that second point, the average sold price fell and the number of new listings coming onto the market slowed. So let's take a look at this chart. This is the total number of active listings. At the start of each month, how many listings were sitting out there on the market, whether they'd been there for a week or for six months, how many were sitting there at the start of the month for buyers to look at? And typically, you know, through a, a typical year, we will see inventory build through into the summer and by early fall, end of summer, we've reached our peak inventory and then that starts to drop again. No new home, not as many homes coming onto the market. Good buyer activity, buying it up through the fall until we get low inventory at the start of the year. That happened there. This year, we saw inventory build because new homes were coming onto the market. Sellers wanted to get this last chance to get their home on the market while interest rates were still low before they got too high. Lots of new listings coming on, but then the rate of buyers buying them slowed down and we got this glut of inventory higher than we have seen certainly in the last year and even by the end of the year in December of 2022, it was more active listings sitting on the market at the start of that month than there were, was in June of 2021 where it peaked. And like I said, here we're looking at how many new listings were coming onto the market. It shows that we were getting a good push of those new listings coming onto the market at the start of the year. And as soon as uh, sellers saw that the buyer activity was dropping, homes are sticking around on the market, maybe on your street. You're seeing two or three houses sitting for a couple months, not going under contract. Sellers decided, I'm not going to list my house now. And we had a real drop in new listings coming onto the market. So we do have a lot of homes out on the market and they're out there and they're sitting there and they're not being purchased and we have far new, uh, new homes coming onto the market. That's where we ended up at the end of December. And so finally, I wanna look at this graph here where we see the difference between the average price of a listing that's sitting out there on the market right now and the average price of the ones that actually sold, the average sales price. And there's kind of two reasons why the average sold price is gonna be way below the average active price. One is that at times uh, the original list price may have come down a bit and the buyer uh, is able to cut a deal where they're paying less for it than they were when it was actually listed. But the bigger reason that why we see this separation is that homes that are priced high contribute to the average active sales, uh, active list price, but if they're priced high and they're never purchased, they never factor in to the average sold price. And so this just shows how higher priced homes will sit around longer, contribute to the data month after month, never really get sold. And there's a lot more, more affordable price homes that actually get sold. And uh, that's why their numbers are there and it draws down the average active sold price. What's more interesting to look at is how these numbers come together and separate. And what we're really seeing at the last half of, uh, last quarter of 2022 was that the average price was going up again, which is, means that the higher priced homes are gonna sit around on the market more and more longer. Even as sellers are dropping their list price, they're dropping their list price, the higher ones are gonna stick around. And then when we're looking at what uh, is the average of what's sold, that continues to drop down Part of that being that uh, sellers are willing to sell their house for less than what they listed at, but more so because buyers are just simply choosing the more affordable homes than spending big bucks uh, with low interest rate on the higher priced homes. So that's why we see those two numbers separating there. And now for my 2023 forecast. Got three points to make here, and the very first one being talking about the 10-year housing cycle. This is something that is common nationwide in the real estate markets, a 10-year cycle. And right now, here in 2023, we are in the second year of that 10-year cycle. The first year, being last year, is one where we see an intensity adjustment, going from that super frenzy market where buyers are doing bidding wars and the price is escalating and there's this huge frenzy uh, to, to purchase homes, and that drops off, showed you that in the last charts where the buyer intensity really fell, and now as we get into our second year of the 10-year cycle, 
we see that uh, whole market solidify. That fall in prices is gonna solidify at some point in the year for various areas of the Portland metro area. Some are gonna do it uh, sooner than others. And then after the second year, we tend to see either stagnant prices or a steady growth in the prices as we head to the end of this 10 year cycle. So we're in the second year where uh, home prices and that activity is solidifying. The second point is that we have a much more balanced market. Homes are staying on the market a little bit longer and we are not seeing those bidding wars and so buyers have more time to look around, shop around, choose and negotiate with sellers certainly better than they could two years ago. Two years ago, if a house was priced well and it was in a good area, there were plenty of buyers who wanted it. There'd be 10 to, or 15 offers going in, huge amount of competition, seller got their total pick and always got a great offer and was able to sell very easily. Now, not quite so much in the seller's control much more uh, options out there for the buyers, but still great for sellers because we do not have a glut of houses out there and really by the numbers, we are still in a seller's market. So the intensity has dropped off, but it hasn't fallen right away and there certainly is no bottom that has fallen out of the market or a burst in a bubble. This is a typical correction in a 10 year housing cycle. That's what we're seeing so far. And then what can we expect for the rest of the year? Certainly in the suburbs, when we look out to areas like Beaverton, Hillsboro, areas like that, we can expect a one to three percent price growth by the end of the year. When we look at the average of the whole year, I think it's very likely that we are going to see prices still grow there over uh, the 2022 year. For Eastside Portland, it's possible that we could end up with either neutral or by the end of the year, a further one to three percent decline, which would be a relatively small decline but the more likely thing is that the slide in house prices for the east side of Portland is probably going to take a little bit longer to solidify than it does for the suburbs. So that's a lot of data and what all of this means is that there are new opportunities out there for buyers and if you're a seller it's a little bit harder to sell your home but not with the right representation or the right representation becomes that much more important. So whether you're a buyer or a seller, I want to talk to you about your real estate goals. Click the link in the description to schedule your free consultation, whether you want to talk by phone, Zoom call, or meet in person. Using the scheduling app is a great way to do it at the time that's right for you. I'm Alex Roy, your trusted realtor in Eastside Portland, working hard for your success.